We're going to start in the Kofun period. And it's named after burial mounds that were very common to the period. And to give you some idea, the burial mound that you're seeing there is about three times the size of the Great Pyramids. It's actually quite a remarkable structure. And these mounds, of course, will grow in scale and number by the 4th century. But the piece we're actually looking at from this period is not one of their burial mounds. Instead, it's a Shinto shrine, the shrine of Amaterasu. Uh, sun goddess. So Japan, of course, is Shinto at the time, and Shinto is neither a centralized nor an organized religion. There is no hierarchy, there is no central shrine, central structure. It's not like Christianity or really more accurately Catholicism, where we can look to the Pope or the Vatican or Rome. Instead, Shinto is based on this conglomeration of local agricultural and natural kami or spirits. Sometimes we see these as deities. And what we're looking at here at the shrine is the main hall at the shrine. This is actually very interesting because they will destroy and rebuild this shrine every 20 years. And that's really a unique feature. Why in the world would you take a perfectly good shrine, tear it down, and then rebuild it? And because it's every 20 years, you notice there's no date to this because we know it starts around the Kofun period, and they probably haven't changed the structure much. And as we look at it, remember Shinto, part of Shinto is being a good steward of nature. And a temple like this is going to encourage people to do that in a very practical way. After all, you need to have the trees that can create the logs that build the structure available every 20 years. And, and for trees to get to this diameter is going to take longer than 20 years. It encourages sort of a long view on those resources. Now, this temple reflects ritual renewal and purification, an idea that's really key to Shinto. It's also believed to reflect early Kofun design elements. The form, we believe, is based on a Japanese granary. Remember, we're dealing with an agricultural and natural faith, so it makes a lot of sense that you would use something that a lot of farmers would recognize, the form of a granary. The shrine is wood, built in a mortise and tenon system, so there are no nails or anything incorporated into it. The mortises slot into the tenons. Now, as we look at the structure itself, these two massive columns, there's one here and one on the opposite side, those are massive cypress wood supports, which carry most of the weight. And a lot of that weight is coming from what's called the ridge pole, this piece up here. And that ridge pole runs along the top, holds down the thatching, and keeps everything in place. You need that additional weight to uh, hold the thatching in place in the case of high wind, that sort of thing. And the decorative elements are used to enhance the roof line. So here we have a series of logs covered in gold leaf, uh, which are really decorative elements. They aren't absolutely necessary in terms of structural purpose. This highlights the connection between religion and nature because, again, you can't rebuild this if you don't have the resources to do it. Uh, the thatched roof, that's an old-fashioned uh, thatched roof. They are very effective, but they need to be replaced as well. And to give you some idea, here's uh, another view of this temple, of this shrine, and we can see how it actually reflects sort of Japanese agricultural design. And here we see them preparing for the latest uh, or the last reconstruction where they're laying out the materials and everything is pre-cut and pre-done. Here we see the mortise and tenon construction here, uh, the tenons being cut into place. Here we have more poles for the structure and those are all laid out and prepared. Here we see the ridge pole uh, being transported to the site, a uh, major ceremony tied to that. And just like we saw 
a few videos back in India where they're reconstructing the temple, this would also develop a sense of community because every 20 years you have a new generation that's going to really take the brunt of the burden for reconstructing the temple. So it becomes part of you. You become a stronger part of the temple community by getting involved in the reconstruction.